Number six, letter A. A rectangular gasoline tank can hold 50 kilograms of gasoline when full. What is the depth of the tank if it is 0.5 meters wide uh, by 0.9 meters long? All right, so here's the tank. We can fill it with 50 kilograms of, of gasoline. We know the, uh, how, the length, right, 0.9, and we know the width. What we're trying to do is find the height or the depth, essentially. Um, so in other words, if you notice, right, it's very, we basically have to convert this mass somehow to a volume, right? Because I'm missing the depth, but I know the length and the width. So I, I, I kind of know that, you know, vo uh, volume will be utilized here somewhere. So I basically have to take this mass and convert it into volume. All right, so basically the idea is this, take the mass, convert it into the volume, and then by using the volume, we're going to be able to find the depth, okay? So the first thing is we need to know the density of gas, all right? That's about 680 kilogram per meter, per, I should say per cubic meter. So the density of gasoline is equal to, I'm just using the formula over here, is equal to the mass over the volume, all right? Solving this thing for V, that's simply the mass divided by now the density. Now we do know the mass, it was 50 kilograms, and we do know the density, which is given here. All right, so we, that means we know the volume. That being the case, now I start thinking about how does volume here, like I said in my outline, how does volume connect to depth? Oh, right, through the volume of a rectangular solid. All right, so the volume of a rectangular solid is length times width times height, aka depth. Solving this for depth, because that's really what we wanna find, we realize that depth will equal the volume divided by the length times the width. And now all we need to do is plug everything in, right? So in terms of the units, I'll actually do this. It's gonna be mass, because I'm plugging in for volume, over, you can bring this then uh, density on down in, into the denominator times length times width. And you are good to go. So the mass is 50. The density is gonna be 680. The length is 0.9 and the width was 0.5. And all we have to do now is calculate. So hold on, let's take out the handy dandy calculator. So 50 divided by parentheses 680 times 0.9 times 0.5. And we get a value of about 0 0.163 meters, right? So remember, there, you know, the, all these units work out nicely here because, you know, they, they gave me a mass, oops, they gave me a mass in kilograms, okay? My density is also, I use the one for kilograms. I also know that the distance measurements here are in meters and the distance measurement for my volume, right, the cubic distance is also in meter. So I know I can just do these calculations right away and the value that gets spit out is in meter. Part B says, discuss whether this gas uh, tank has a reasonable volume for passenger car. Yeah, I mean, what we can do now is you can basically take you know, there's a couple of ways to do this, but you could basically take now uh, the volume of this thing, okay, which we can now calculate, right? I mean, we could have calculated it before as well. So why don't we just find out what that volume is? So this will be letter B. So we have here, uh, so the volume was equal to the mass, which is 50 over 680, right? So that's going to be, remember this is in cubic meters, so this is about 0 0.07, three, five cubic meters, all right? And now that might not sound too familiar, so maybe what we have to do is convert this now into some, you know, liter value of some sort that might make it make more sense, or a gallon value, it doesn't really matter. Um, so anyway, gotta cancel the meter. I can go right to centimeter, because I know centimeter can get me into, into my uh, liter values through the milliliter. So I realize that there's 100 centimeters in a meter, but there's one meter here and there's three of them, right, uh, at the start. So all that means I gotta cube this, okay? That means the meters now will cancel with those cubic meters. This will get me centimeter cubed, okay? Then I realize that, all oh, right, that beautiful conversion, one centimeter cubed is equivalent to one milliliter, all right? And then from there, you can stop if you want it, but what might make more sense for a lot of you out there, especially international students right around the globe in Europe and whatnot, um, you know, where, wherever, uh, most of the world runs on, uh, runs on the metric system as opposed to the US. So this would make more sense converting this into uh, liters. So uh, we have a thousand milliliters is equivalent to one liter. Let's see what this conversion works out to be. All right, so we take our, our answer here and then we are going to 0 0.0735, multiply it by 100 cubed, and then divide it by 1,000.
So we get a value of about 73.5, 73.5 liters. As I'm sure you most know, this is good to go, okay? Uh, so it is reasonable, right? If you had to convert this into a gallon, uh, you know, the rough, the rough uh, approximation is that there's about three and a half liters, I believe, in a gallon. So you can just take that value of 73.5 and divide it by 3.5, and you get about 21 gallons, all right? So apparently, you know, the big, bigger cars, uh, that's certainly reasonable. So guys, thanks for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. I look forward to helping you out with more questions. Take care.